Okay, after quite some time, here's a new video from my latest project I wanted to uh, share with you. So what is it? Uh, actually, it's a lot of work. No, um, I call it time manipulator. For the ham guys of you, it's a very low frequency, 77.5 kHz transmitter which is transmitting the DCF77 time signal uh, which is generated uh, in, in, in the transmitter by an Atmel microcontroller. For all of you who do not know the DCF77, it's actually the call sign of the time signal transmitter located in Mainflingen, that's close to Frankfurt in, uh, in Germany. And this transmitter uh, sends out uh, the time signal which is uh, used to control these little clocks. You know them, you can buy them for a couple of bucks, you plug, uh, put in a battery and then after a couple of minutes you have the, the current time. Okay, so let's switch it on. It uh, will make some, some noise. Sorry the, uh, to, to build in a fan. Let's go for it. Now it's powered. What does it tell you? It tells you uh, you better should connect a 50 ohm load to the, to the output uh, and then you have to confirm with OK as soon as you have uh, plugged in the dummy load. It as well tells you of course you have power, self-test is red, it's not yet passed completely and the time signal is zero. Self-test, what does it do? It actually checks the two uh, voltages of the power supply which is um, 5 volt and 24 volt. It has checked these voltages already and they seem to be okay otherwise you would uh, hear an annoying alarm sound. Uh, but uh, after you plugged in the dummy load and you pressed OK the transmitter will go for 300 milliseconds to, to full output power and then it's measuring within this time uh, the voltages again and if they are within the allowed range then uh, the self-test will switch to uh, green and shows you that uh, everything should be fine. So let's do this. I press the OK button and you watch at the self-test. Um, let's do it like that and you can see the output meter. Okay, I press it. Okay, you have seen it, so the transmitter quickly went to full power um, and then self-test was done and it switched to green. So, now the program is now waiting for you to enter the time and date you uh, want to transmit. So I press uh, OK and then it awaits you to uh, enter the, the date. Okay, let's choose something funny, 11, 11, 11, something like that. So, day is 11, months, let's use November, which is 11, and the year, 11, and then the hour, uh, that's 25, uh, 25, <laughs> 24 hour format. Um, so it's AM if I choose 11 and minute, let's use 11 as well. Okay, now it shows you what you have entered the 11th of November 2011, 11 o'clock and 11 minutes. And if you would not be happy, you could go back with this uh, four backward button and uh, correct it. But uh, we are happy. So I later on press OK and then it will generate um, the code and transmit it. Um, but I have to fix the camera first and to change the light a little bit because actually the light is sometimes disturbing the the receiver of the of this clock a little bit. So let's do it like that. And then I zoom a little bit closer so that you can see it like that. Remove the light.
Okay, should work. It's uh, currently 12 o'clock, 47 minutes, and it's the, I hope you can see it, the third of, ah, i show it to you. Now that you think it's a trick. So, 12.48, third of July, and we have in my room annoying 29.4 degree. So, okay, what I do now, I press the button and then um, the time manipulator is generating the code, there's a little countdown and then it starts to transmit. What I have to do before is I have to start the receiver of this, um, of this uh, radio controlled clock. Usually in the cheap ones uh, the receiver is not always running. Uh, it's running usually only once per day uh, in, in the night, I don't know, 12, 1 or 2 o'clock. Um, so to, to, to show you the effect I have to start the, the receiver manually. So I start it and then I press OK. Let's, let's starting the receiver. You see this little sign here. And then I confirm it's generating the code. Now we have a countdown. And now you can see the output power goes up to 100% and then every second uh, back to 25% uh, out of for 100 or for 200 milliseconds. Uh, you can see it as well at the time signal LED if it is red it's full power if it is green it's um, only uh, 20% and on the clock you can see now as well a little antenna symbol which is uh, blinking uh, with one one uh, uh, every every second that means it receives the signal on the display you can See now it's uh, transmitting sequence one, which is code word one, um, that contains the full information for the the, uh, the day, months, year, and and uh, <coughs> sorry the time we have entered. And then <coughs> usually um, it takes more than than one uh, code word to to transmit. Um, to uh, have the time changed on the clock. One is sufficient, um, but uh, it's kind of a security check of, of the clock, so they, uh, some of them want uh, two correct code words and uh, some of them want uh, three. So let's see whether that's one with, uh, which is changing after two code words or three. So again on the display, code word 2, there's a paragraph below, uh, it's the total what the machine does is transmitting 5 code words. So I would say we are somewhere at 30%, uh, 35% in the moment. And here we go, it worked. I show you. The time has changed. The time jump was successful without using a flux capacitor. It's 11 o'clock, 11 minutes, and it's the 11th of November. And sorry, the, the year you cannot see on this uh, uh, clock. And we still have 29.4 degree. So just Finally, again, it's still transmitting, code word 3, um, and there you have the output power, relative output power. And that's it. So I better switch it off now and press reset. Okay, so that's it.